Haribo and Namaste everyone. A blessed day and a blessed evening to all. Welcome to Congregational Kirtan Pasamai Program and Share Gems of Wisdom by Jagat Speak Special and Sir Mahabhagavad Das. We are live in Facebook, YouTube, Reach, Viki and Zoom Samocast. I'm your host for today, Mukunda Dasi. Please accept my humble obeisances. Before I introduce our first guest to chant with us, let's continue to pray for our dear friends and all devotees around the world who suffers from pain, illness, and uncertainties. Let's continue chanting and praying. So from my place, let's go straight ahead to our first guest to chant with us. From Thailand, let's welcome Vladimir. Haribol Namaste. And Haribol, family Haribol. Happy to see you. Okay. Happy to see you all. Haribol. Yeah. 
Krishna, Chaitanya, Radha 
Haribo, Haribo, Chai Shri Chaitanya. Thank you so much, Vladimir and family, for coming. Always grateful to have you sharing your sweet and blissful chanting. Chai Chai Gurudev, Chai Chai Nitai Kaur, Chai Chai Sankirtan, Haribo. Haribo, Haribo. Thank you so much. Please take care and please accept our humble respects. Haribo, namaste. Haribo. Haribo, Haribo. And now let's fly to Hawaii. Let's welcome my dear Radharani Dasi. Haribo, namaste. Haribo, namaste. Haribo. Haribo.
Harry Poe. Harry Poe. Harry Poe. Chai, Chai, Lord Chaitanya. Thank you so much, my dear Radharani Dasi, for coming. Always grateful to have you sharing your sweet and blissful chanting. Jai, Jai, Gurudev. Jai, Jai, Anita. Or Jai, Jai, Sankirtan. Harry Poe. Harry Poe. Thank you so much for having me. Haribo. Thank you so much. Please take care and please accept our humble respects. Hari Bol Namaste. Hari Bol. Hari Bol, And now let's fly back to the Philippines. Let's welcome my dear Ata Ellen. Hari Bol Namaste. Hari Bol. Hari Bol Namaste, everyone. Hari Bol. Thank you for the invitation. Hari Bol. Oh. 
Hare 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 
Thank you so much, my dear Ate Ellen, for coming. Always grateful to have you sharing your sweet and blissful chanting. Jai Jai Guru Dev, Jai Jai Anitai Gaur, Jai Jai Sankirtan Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Maraming salamat po. Please take care and please accept our humble respects. Hari Bo Namaste. And now let's welcome our next guest to chant with us, my dear Mabel. Hari Bo Namaste. Haribol, namaste. Namaste, everyone. Haribol. Haribol. Is my sound okay? Yes. Haribol.
Haribo. Haribo. Thank you so much, my dear Mabel. Thank you for coming and chanting the holy name so peacefully sweet. All glories to Shiguro and Shiguranga. Jaya Jaya Sankirtan. Harinama Haribo. Jaya Jaya Lord Chaitanya. Always be safe. Mabel, thank you so much. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, everyone. Haribo. Haribo. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining and staying online. Our congregational kirtan, day day uh, five, our celebration of Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. From Sharamai Kirtan, let's move to our shared gems of wisdom. He will talk about the glories of Lord Chaitanya, a disciple of His Holiness Jagat Guru Siddha Surup Ananda Paramahamsa Prabhupada. Let's welcome our dear Sir Mahabhagavat Das from Hawaii. Namaste, sir. Thank you, sir, for coming. Please accept my humble obeisances. Namaste. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Very okay. well. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Uh, thank you. Uh. Do you hear me now? Yes, sir. There's a, a little bit sound. Okay, I'll just plug in my microphone. Yeah, okay. Okay, how's that? Yeah. Yes, sir. There's a... It's very windy here today in Hawaii. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Well, everyone. Namaste. <clears throat> I hope you had a wonderful... Uh, Lord Chaitanya's Appearance Day celebration yesterday. And so um, <clears throat> I'll chant for a little bit and then I'm going to read some different pastimes of Lord Chaitanya from the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat by Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur. Uh, different nice pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Thank you. 
Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Parvadiga Sattar, Sarashishna Jigakuru, Sudha Sarupananda, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Parvadiga Sattar, Sarashishi Maharis Devangari, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Ananta Kuru Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai. Prem Sikoho Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Dvaita Garadar, Shri Osari Goa Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Namacha Jishil Harida Sako Kichai, Nitai Goes World Mission Kichai, Nabudu Itami Kichai, Shishi Radha Krishna Go Gopina, Shamakun Radhakun, Kiri Govadani Kichai, Vrindavan Dang Kichai, Mathurudang Kichai, Mayapodang Kichai, Ganga Mai Kichai, Jamuna Mai Kichai, Tosi Devi Kichai, Bhakti Devi Kichai. O oh, glorious assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. O oh, glorious assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. O oh, glorious assembled devotees, Hare Krishna. O oh, glorious to Lord Chaitanya's appearance day. O oh, glorious to Shri Krishna Chaitanya. O oh, glorious to uh, Hari Nama Sankatan. Hari Bol. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Siddha Swarupa Nanda Paramahansa Iti Namine Namo Siddha Swarupa Nanda Paramahansa Namine Gora Karuna Swarupaya Radha Krishna Prasthaya Te So before speaking, first off, on my respectful obeisances, the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Jagakuru Siddha Swarupa Nanda Srila Prabhupada who is very dear to Lord Krishna, having taken shelter at his lotus feet. Srila Prabhupada is the mercy manifestation of Lord Chaitanya, Gora Karuna Swarupaya, and very dear to Radha and Krishna, Radha Krishna Prasthayate. Anchakapa Tarubhyas Cha, Kripa Sindhu Bhaiva Cha, Patitanan Pavain Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namo Namaha. Offer my respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, who like wish-fulfilling trees, are able to fulfill all the desires of the fallen, living entities, and are full of compassion upon them. Hi, Bo. Namaste. So, thank you for the opportunity to um, uh, to chat with you all and to um, to uh, speak a little bit about the glories of Lord Chaitanya um, you know so chatting then I was thinking you know uh, Lord Chaitanya uh, Satchinanda so Lord Chaitanya is the son of uh, Sachi Mother Sachi so Mother Sachi is Krishna's um, mother uh, throughout many of his appearances. She's Mother Devaki in uh, the appearance of Krishna, uh, Mother Kasalya in Lord Rama's appearance, uh, Aditi in Vamana's appearance, and so many other um, roles as mother of Krishna that uh, Mother Sachi plays. Uh, Mother Sachi is very dear to Lord Chaitanya. Uh, so, you know, his, um, uh, you know, on taking sannyas, his biggest concern was uh, how his mother would respond. Of course, Mother Sachi was completely devastated. Uh, so, anyways, we don't, we, don't, we don't really like to speak on the, or even read about the pastime of Lord Chaitanya. Shaitanya taking sannyas because it's so painful. You know, when we worship Lord Shaitanya uh, and Lord Nityananda, generally we worship them in Nabhaduita. When Lord Shaitanya has beautiful flowing hair, beautiful curling hair that according to Sri Shaitanya Bhagavat uh, smells very nicely. So the idea of Lord Shaitanya shaving off his beautiful uh, locks was devastating to the devotees. Uh, they all immediately uh, cried <laughs> in despondency at the idea of Lord Chaitanya, um, 
you know, his head being shaved and his leaving home for who knows where, leaving Mother Sachi. You know, Mother Sachi was um, her husband, Jagannath Mishra, had passed away uh, after Vishwarup, Lord Chaitanya's older brother, the incarnation of Lord Balaram, not different from Lord Nityananda, uh, had um, left Jagannath Mishra, uh, left this world. And uh, of course, Vishwarup had already um, uh, left home and taken sannyas. So Mother Sachi's greatest fear was always that Lord Chaitanya would leave home and take sannyas. And then the event occurred where he's taking sannyas. Of course, Mother Sachi also had nine daughters who all passed away. So then she finally had Vishwarup, who took sannyas. Then she had Lord Chaitanya, whom she uh, uh, diligently uh, served and loved and fed and uh, she was so happy with Lord Chaitanya's relationship with um, Vishnu Priya, uh, Lord Chaitanya's second wife. And uh, so the idea of Lord Chaitanya leaving, taking sannyas, absolutely devastating. Um, also, Lord Chaitanya Gora Hari, so Lord Chaitanya is Gora, golden, uh, Hari, Krishna, the Supreme Lord. So Lord Chaitanya is the golden Lord. And Shri Krishna Shaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahiyanya. Shri Krishna Shaitanya. So Krishna Shaitanya, this is um, Lord Chaitanya's sannyas name. You know, his birth name or his name given uh, in his birth ceremony is Vishrambara. He's a maintainer, maintainer of the universe. And uh, he was also known as Nimai, uh, as he was born under a, a neem tree. This was like a nickname. But his sannyas name was Sri Krishna Shaitanya. Krishna Shaitanya. So this, this was a very special um, uh, sannyas name. Uh, when he received it, Keshava Bharati, uh, generally speaking, when someone takes sannyas, uh, one of his names would always be Bharati in the particular uh, Sampradaya or succession that Keshava Bharati was, was in. But he felt, no, this name is not special enough. So called him as Lord Chaitanya, it appeared to um, spread consciousness of Krishna. Uh, Chaitanya means consciousness in Krishna. So Krishna consciousness or awakening uh, uh, consciousness of Krishna in the, in the uh, minds of the fallen souls of Kali Yuga. You know, so he gave him the name Krishna Shaitanya. Krishna Shaitanya. Krishna Shaitanya. So this is a very special and a wonderful uh, sannyas name. So Sri Krishna Shaitanya. Radha Krishna Nahiyanya. Uh, Nahiyanya is uh, combined. So Sri Krishna Shaitanya is Radha and Krishna combined. So Radha is Krishna's uh, um, Radha and Krishna are non-different. So Shimadhi went Krishna for the purposes of uh, his uh, pleasure potency Krishna expands himself as Shimadhi Radharani. So in that sense Radharani is non-different than Krishna. Uh, but still, uh, you know, in line with Lord Chaitanya's Achincha Beta Beta Tapa teachings of simultaneous oneness yet distinction, Srimadhi Radharani, of course, is uh, distinct. And so the um, Srimadhi Radharani uh, is Krishna's topmost devotee and Krishna's topmost lover. She has the topmost prema bhakti, the mood of Mahabhava, topmost devotion for Lord Chaitanya. So Krishna, you know, is fascinated with Srimadhi Radharani's love for him. Her love for him is so special and intense. You know, Lord Chaitanya wanted to taste it for himself. He wanted to experience what Srimadhi Radharani experiences. So when Lord Chaitanya takes on the mood and complexion, so another name for Radharani is Gora or Gori, which means golden. 
So Shimadi Radharani has a golden complexion. And she has the mood of the topmost love for Krishna. So when, Lord Sh when Krishna wishes to taste the love of Srimati Radharani and taste the love of his topmost devotee for himself, then Krishna becomes uh, Shri Krishna Shaitanya or Goranga, the golden limbed one. You know, Lord, Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself covered in the mood and complexion of Srimati Radharani. So he's Radha and Krishna combined in that he's Lord Chaitanya is Krishna himself, but combined with Srimati Radharani's a mood of love for Krishna. So we're very fortunate to be living in this um, particular uh, Kali Yuga. You know, in Kali Yuga, the, the Yuga Dham is always chanting of the holy names. Uh, but in this particular Kali Yuga, uh, we are fortunate in that Lord Chaitanya has appeared. You know, different incarnations of Krishna appear in different Kali Yugas to spread the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. But in this Kali Yuga, Lord Chaitanya appeared, uh, um, spread, taking on the role of spreading the Yuga Dham, the chanting of the holy names, uh, and responding to the call of Sri Dvaita Acharya, who was uh, dis despondent at the... Um, you know, the, the condition of the fallen souls in Kali Yuga. So he read in scripture that if you worship uh, Krishna with some Ganges water and Solsi, and he had a Shalagram Shila, which is a Shalagram Shila is a black stone that comes from the Godavari River in northern India. And these stones, or Shilas, uh, they don't need to be installed. Um, you know, so similarly with uh, Govardhan Shilas and Shalagram Shilas, one doesn't have to install the deity. Whereas when we have um, deities in the temples or in a home altar or so on, we have to install them and invite Krishna to accept our worship. But with the Shalagram Shila and the Govardhan Shilas, of course we can't just go and get a Govardhan Shila. <laughs> We're forbidden from going and taking um, Shilas or stones from Govardhan. But we can, um, if, if we have the have the fortune to have a Shalagram Shila or a Govardhan Shila, it doesn't have to be installed. We can just, Krishna is there. We can just worship Krishna. So Shiladvaita Acharya, um, you know, reading this in scripture, he then um, got his Shalagram Shila and worshipped, um, worshipped it with some uh, Ganges water and Tulsi leaves and called for, for Krishna to appear to save the fallen souls of Kali Yuga. And so this Lord Shiladvaita's calling coincided with the uh, time for the appearance of the incarnation of the Lord who would uh, teach the Yuga Dham or the chanting of the holy names and also coincided with uh, Krishna's desire to taste Srimati Radharani's love. You know, so Lord Chaitanya appears uh, to spread love for Krishna and to taste it himself. Um, you know, so, so Lord Chaitanya is uh, you know, the most, described as the most munificent incarnation of God because he gives love for God. You know, when Krishna appeared, he demonstrated his transcendental pastimes. And by reading and hearing and understanding Krishna's transcendental pastimes, um, contemplating upon, meditating upon, then one becomes attracted to Krishna. Krishna is all attractive. Krishna's pastimes, his leelas, are all attractive. You know, hearing about Krishna from Krishna book or the 10th canto of the Shema Bhagavatam, uh, or from different literatures, particularly by the uh, Goswamis and, and uh, the... Uh, Acharyas coming in succession from the uh, six Goswamis, you know, it's just all attractive hearing about Krishna's transcendental pastimes. Uh, but, but Krishna himself didn't actually teach uh, love for Krishna. He um, refers to it a little bit in Bhagavad Gita and then also in the Uddhava Gita, the 11th canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. He describes bhakti. But he didn't teach it in the way that Lord Chaitanya taught it. Lord Chaitanya not only taught the philosophy, as Krishna did in Bhagavad Gita and Uddhava Gita. Uh, but Lord Chaitanya also um, demonstrated it. You know, Lord, Lord Chaitanya demonstrated love for Krishna, you know, spontaneous love for Krishna, and showed us, uh, the, he taught us and showed us the path, you know, as he tasted it himself. And um, so not only, of course, Lord Chaitanya is Radha and Krishna combined, but uh, not only do we know this philosophically, but uh, Lord Chaitanya revealed his form as Radha and Krishna combined to Shila Ramananda Roy. 
And this, uh, this is described in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita and in the, in the Madhulila, middle, middle pastimes uh, of Lord Chaitanya. So um, I was going to, I wanted to read some of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya from the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. So the, the two principal uh, biographies of Lord Chaitanya that, that we um, generally study, uh, the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, the nectarine pastimes of Lord Chaitanya, uh, Shila Krishna Kaviraj Goswami. And this, uh, the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita has more of the philosophy or more of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, you know, through the five principal conversations that Lord Chaitanya had with Prakasananda Saraswati, um, Salva Bhama Bhattacharya, Ramananda Roy, and Shila Rupas and Shila Sanatana Goswamis. These five conversations uh, com comprise a, a very large portion of the Sri Chaitanya Charamrita, so the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And he also, Srila Krishna's Kaviraj also described Lord Chaitanya's later pastimes in much greater depth uh, than in the other principal biographical work, which is the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat by Srila Vrindavandas Thakur. So I was going to, um, <coughs> and the, the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat by Srila Vrindavandas Thakur uh, has extensive detail on Lord Chaitanya's early pastimes. Uh, and we get a bit of a glimpse into the way the, the difference between the two works in the, in the way that they're divided. In um, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, the Adi Lila, or the Adi Khan, the, the first part of um, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, is about Lord Chaitanya's uh, appearance and his early pastimes in Navadweep, uh, principally as a, uh, initially as a student and then as a, a teacher of Sanskrit and logic and so on as a scholar. And all of this is described as his Arikan, or early pastimes. And then the middle pastimes, the Majakan, is after Lord Chaitanya goes to Gaya and accepts initiation from Srila Ishwara Puri and then begins the Sankirtan movement in Navadweep. And then the final pastime is the Anchalila, Anchakand, is after Lord Chaitanya takes sannyas. And this section of the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad after Lord Chaitanya takes sannyas is quite short. Whereas in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Adi Lila is everything up to the point where Lord Chaitanya takes sannyas. And then the middle pand, or middle um, Lila, as Srila Krishna Kaviraj uh, termed it, is uh, the first six years of Lord Chaitanya after taking sannyas, where he uh, resided in Jagannath Puri and toured uh, India, you know, going to the south of India and also to Vrindavan and Mathura. And, um, and then the final pastime is Anchalila, which is, not, uh, which is barely mentioned in Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad, is Lord Chaitanya's final pastimes where he didn't tour and he just uh, tasted love for Krishna in the mood of Shimadi Radharani and uh, separation. So anyway, so I was going to read some of the um, <coughs> pastimes from Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat with as much time as I have, and um, and maybe add a few comments. So I, I, I made, I'll just, I'm just picking a little bits from here and there from the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. So initially, the, to begin with, Sri Vishwambara travels to Gaya. Gaya is in <coughs> present-day um, Bangladesh. So Lord Chaitanya. Um, you know, went to Gaya uh, initially on a business trip. He was, you know, doing some business and making money. And he also went to, uh, you know, perform the Shraddha ceremony for his father, Jagannath Mishra, at Gaya, where there's a place where there is uh, Lord Vishnu's footprints. And, uh, and this is where uh, one traditionally offers Shraddha or makes an offering to one's ancestors. So anyway, so in Gaya, <coughs> the next day the Lord went to Ishwara Puri and with sweet and humble words, approached him for an initiation mantra. Srila Puripada said, How is it that you, from me, ask an initiation mantra? I give you my very life and soul. You know, so one uh, special thing about Lord Chaitanya, you know, generally speaking prior to Lord Chaitanya, um, the initiation mantras were secret. Um, one would receive initiation and receive a mantra, but you wouldn't tell anyone the mantra. The mantras were secret, and it was, um, you know, understood that the mantra would lose its power if it was if it was spoken out loud. So the mantras was speaking, spoken silently within the mind. Uh, actually, <coughs> there's an interesting um, story of Ramanuja Acharya. Uh, he took initiation, he received the mantra, Om Namo Narayana, uh, Om Namo Narayanaya, um, 
I think there might be another word in there. Anyway, on the more Bhagavate and Narayanaya. Uh, you know, I offer my obeisances to the Supreme Personality Narayan. And uh, anyway, your spiritual master is on this a secret mantra. Don't, you know, it's a secret mantra, you don't speak it out loud. You know, so <laughs> it's a very powerful mantra. So anyway, uh, Ramanuja Acharya then was like, well, uh, only the spiritual master told him, if you say this mantra out loud or give it to others, you know, spread it, the, you know, you'll go to hell. <laughs> but it's a very powerful mantra and people will be liberated. So the next day, Ramanuja Acharya went into town, stood at the highest place he could, and then chanted out the mantra so everyone could hear it. So then when his spiritual master says, well, why did you do this? He said, well, look, I don't mind if I have to suffer and, you know, and help perpetually, so long as the people have benefited. You know, so he's giving people the names of Krishna. So similarly with um, Lord Chaitanya, you know, the, the Hare Krishna mantra you know, is contained in the Upanishad. And so generally speaking, the mantra is not chanted out loud. And uh, so Lord Chaitanya actually you know, spread the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. And so while, while in the Gaudiya Vaishnava uh, Sampradaya lineage, there's what's known as Harinama initiation or initiation into the Hare Krishna mantra. Uh, the, the practical reality is, you know, we've all received, whether we've received Harinam, formal Harinam initiation or not, we've all been initiated into the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. As we hear our uh, beloved spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, as he chants, Hare Krishna. You know, he's chanting the Hare Krishna mantra into our ear. You know, and from our ear it goes into our mind and into our heart. And as we take shelter and, and refuge in this Hare Krishna mantra, then we're in fact, you know, being initiated into this Hare Krishna mantra. So this is quite different. This is like revolutionary. Actually something revolutionary that Lord Chaitanya did. In fact, as you read the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, you know, as Lord Chaitanya is performing the um, Sankirtan, you know, the chanting, uh, you know, they're chanting in Srivasa's house and they're chanting out loud. And, um, you know, everybody's disturbed and one of the, not everybody, but many people are disturbed. But some are disturbed because they wanted to be able to go in and participate, but Lord Chaitanya would only allow a certain number of people in. Uh, some of them are disturbed because they, um, they're thinking, well, the mantras shouldn't be chanted out loud. Mantras are supposed to be uh, silently chanted. And so they, this is, of course, a very primitive thing. So many people are upset by this. You know, Srila Vrindavan Das, the core, mentions this uh, numerous times throughout the Shisha Dhani Bhagavad. So, um, you know, Lord Chaitanya you know, requests initiation from uh, Srila Ishwara Puri. And, but Srila uh, Ishwara Puri is saying, how is it? that you're asking for initiation from me. I give you my very life and soul. In other words, Ishwara Puri can see that Lord Chaitanya uh, was Krishna himself. You know, so he's like, well, how is this possible? How can I give you initiation? But Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of the devotee of Krishna. And so he, you know, he, he wants to receive initiation. And we can see in his relationship with um, Ishwara Puri, you know, the, the proper way to approach the spiritual master. So then uh, Lord Srila Vrindavan Das, the call continues, and to instruct everyone, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Narayana, the Supreme Instructing Spiritual Master of everyone, accept an initiation from Sri Bhada Puri with an initiation mantra of ten syllables. So you see here, Srila Vrindavan Das, the call doesn't state what the mantra was, it just gives the number of syllables. The Lord circumambulated Sri Bhada Puri and said, I have surrendered my life to you. Please always look upon me with a merciful glance, so I may always float in an ocean of love of Krishna. So this is the mood that the devotee should have on ex towards a spiritual master on taking initiation or on accepting the spiritual master as one's, one's um, as a representative of Krishna and as the person that I should be pleasing to. As Krishna is the most representative, uh, realizing that the perfection of my life is in pleasing my spiritual master. So I've surrendered my life to you. Please always look upon me with a merciful glance, so I may always float in the ocean of love for Krishna. So after taking initiation, then, uh, then Lord Chaitanya then began to manifest or display you know, his love for Krishna. And so this was the beginning of the Sankirtan movement. So then Lord Chaitanya, uh, on returning to Nadia, uh, Navadweep, uh, then begins the Sankirtan movement. So a uh, reading from a chapter entitled, Mahaprabhu starts Sankirtan at the house of Srivasa Pandit. But Waiter Acharya Prabhu had the different comments from the Vaishnavas about the Lord's ecstatic trance. And he was extremely pleased. You know, Lord Chaitanya had gone into a trance of love of Godhead. And Advaita Acharya, on hearing this, was extremely pleased. Overcome with joy, he spoke to the Vaishnavas. My dear devotee brothers, I had a dream last night, which I wish, wish to reveal to all of you. I took rest feeling very sad and dejected. I was fasting because I could not understand a text of the Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, this is interesting. I spoke on this in my uh, Bhagavad Gita class last week. You know, this is very interesting. Advaita Acharya is not understanding a verse. 
You know, and of course, so how many times do we read Bhagavad Gita and not understand a verse? You know, so here we see even Advaita Acharya, uh, the, you know, Sadashita, the incarnation of Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu combined, you know, he's not understanding a verse in Bhagavad Gita. So when this occurs, you know, he then, he feels sad and dejected. I don't understand the verse. You know, he's fasting. He's undergoing austerity, you know, for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord of Krishna. That Krishna will bless him with the intelligence to understand this verse. Sometime during the night, in my dream, a person came to me and said, Wake up, Acharya. Take your food immediately. I will reveal to you the real meaning of the Bhagavad Gita text. However, first, you must rise and eat, and then worship me. Discard the melancholy in your heart, for your austerities and vows have finally reaped a full harvest. All your fasting, all your worship, and your endless treaties to the Lord, crying, Krishna, Krishna, and the bow you made with lifted hands that the advent of the Lord will all come to fruition. So this is referring to uh, Lord Chaitanya's uh, worship of the Shalagram Shila with uh, Ganges and Ganges water and Tulsi leaves appealing for the Lord to appear. The chanting of Lord Krishna's holy name will constantly reverberate in every country, in every town, and in every village. You know, this is the prediction. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur took this as the prediction that soon uh, someone will appear who will fulfill Lord Chaitanya's uh, desire that the holy names of Krishna will be chanted in every country, in every town, in every village. By your mercy, everyone will be able to experience here in Navadvipa, in Sri Vasa's house, devotional ecstasy that is rarely achieved even by Lord Brahma. Now I will take your leave, but first you must eat. I will appear to you again in the future. When I opened my eyes, I saw our Lord Vishwambara, the Lord Chaitanya. But within moments, he vanished from my sight. I do not understand the mysterious ways of Lord Krishna, how he acts, and to whom he reveals what secrets. Vishwambara's older brother, Vishwarupa, used to come to my house and discuss Bhagavad Gita. At that time, Vishwambara was a most exquisite child who was most charming to behold. He would come to my house to call his brother. The little child, so Vishwambara would go to Advaita Acharya's house and discuss Bhagavad Gita. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, Mother Sachi would send uh, Lord Chaitanya or Vish, uh, Vishwambara or Nimai to go and get him. He was just a little child. And Lord uh, Advaita Acharya would see him. He was see him as most charming. The little child, Vishwambara, captivated my entire being with his extraordinary beauty. I would spontaneously bless him, saying, May you develop pure devotion to the Lord. Yeah, so this is the, you know, the ultimate blessing that one should receive. May you develop pure devotion to the Lord. There's nothing else that is worth receiving. The only thing of any value in this world is pure devotion to Lord Krishna. You know, we have so many desires. Right? So many desires, we're seeking material happiness, trying to find it in different places, thinking, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy if I can just get married to this person. I'll be happy if, this, if my wife or husband will treat me nicer and fulfill my desires. This will make me happy. <laughs> um, you know, or if I go and reside in a particular country, that'll make me happy. If I have friends, that'll make me happy. If I have children, that'll make me happy. If I get money, that'll make me happy. If I get to go to the heavenly planets, that'll make me happy. <laughs> you know, so many material desires. And, uh, you know, we're all seeking someone who can benedict us. You know, people approach Krishna, as Krishna says, and by Gita, four times the pious people uh, approach him. You know, one of them is one in material, uh, with material desires. They approach Krishna, oh Krishna, give me this, give me that. You know, and even Dhruva Maharaj approaches Krishna, wanting a kingdom, a kingdom better than anyone's ever had, even better than his great-grandfather, Lord Brahma. You know, so this is so common, approaching Krishna for some material benediction. But this is of no value. You know, and Dhruva Maharaj has his desire fulfilled, and he sees Krishna, and is benedicted with receiving a wonderful kingdom. He actually receives the pole star, the eternal bike on the planet. He, um, he's like, well, I don't want it. Now I see how wonderful you are, Krishna. You know, so here, Lord Sh uh, Advaita Acharya is benedicting Vishwambara, Lord Chaitanya. May you have, may you develop pure devotion to the Lord. The child hailed from an illustrious family of great scholars. His maternal grandfather was Sri Nilambara Chakravati. Lord Vishwambara is a great scholar. So it is natural that he would become attached to Lord Krishna. This is the conclusion of all scholarship. The conclusion, the end of all knowledge, right? Vedanta means end of knowledge. You know, what is the end of all knowledge? That one should develop love for Krishna. Everything points in that direction. You know, all the Vedic literatures and Bhagavad Gita, Shema Bhagavatam, Shri Chaitanya Charamrita, they're all, uh, Shri Chaitanya Bhagavat, they're all teaching us, just love Krishna. Develop love for Krishna. This is the goal of life. You know, this is known as, uh, Lord Chaitanya's teachings are analyzed into uh, three parts, the uh, Sambandha, or relationship, you know, the, the relationship with the soul, Krishna, the relationship with the soul, with this world, um, 
you know, the, the and understanding of um, our identity. Right? This is um, samanda. Who am I? Why am I suffering? You know, what is the purpose of life? Right? This is samanda. The so Lord Chaitanya, of course, teaches the answer to these questions. And our spiritual master, Srila uh, Prabhupada, has, has taught the science of identity, which is basically teaching some manda or a relationship, who I am, right? my true identity, a spirit soul, uh, servant of the Supreme Lord. You know, and then the uh, second aspect of Chaitanya's teachings is Abhidaya, which means the process. What is the process for achieving the goal of life? Of course, the process for achieving the goal of life is to engage in devotional service, sadhana bhakti, you know, devotional service and practice. You know, I may not have, or uh, well, we all have, love for Krishna within our hearts. Love for Krishna is innate within us. You know, it's lying dormant within our hearts, just covered over by ignorance, maya, illusion. You know, we've forgotten our true identity as the part and parcel of Krishna, the servant of Krishna. So Abhidaya is the process of engaging in devotional service to achieve the goal of life. And the goal of life, or Prayojana, the third part of Lord Chaitanya's teaching. So Sambandha relationship, Abhidaya, the process, and Prayojana, the goal of life. So Prayojana, the goal of life, is to uh, attain pure love for Krishna, Prema Bhakti. This is the goal of life. We should have no other goal in life. There's no other goal in life. We may have um, goals along the way to help us attain pure love for Krishna. But pure love for Krishna is the goal of life. Any other goal is temporary. It's illusory. It'll be finished when this body is finished. At the end of this body, everything in connection with the body is finished. Finito. No more in existence. Whatever desires we had, you know, are finished. Whatever we attain, whatever position in life or status in society or our relationships with different people in this world, it's all over. We start again. Of course, we take our desires with us. And as... Um, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 15.15, from me comes knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. <laughs> you know, so uh, knowledge arises, remembrance. Krishna gives us remembrance, super soul, Lord in the heart. Helps us to remember what our desires were. And we wake up and so we all have our own personalities and desires and wants and wishes, you know. Uh, this comes with us. Look, Krishna reminds us. Um, but anyway, any other desire is pointless. We should, every, every desire we should have should be in support of attaining the goal of life or prayojana. Pure devotional service, love for Krishna. So, um, all of you kindly bless him that he may develop the highest devotional mood. May the Supreme Lord Krishna be merciful upon all, benedicting everyone to become thoroughly mad with the chanting of the Lord's holy names. If there is any truth to my words, then in future everyone will come to the house of this great Brahmana, Sri Vishwambara. And Waiter Acharya Prabhu roared jubilantly, and all of the devotees joined in with him. The Supreme Personality of Godhead descended in the form of his name, and everyone chanted, Hari, Hari. Someone said, Nimai Panda has now become a great devotee, so he will propagate the congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord and increase our joy. The devotees offered their obeisances to Waiter Acharya Prabhu and left in great ecstasy, chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu. Whenever Vishwambara met anyone on the street, he would always speak with great affection. When he went for his early morning bath to the Ganges, he would meet all the Vaishnava devotees of the way. When he saw Srivast Thakur, he would offer his obeisances. Being very pleased with his behavior, the devotees would bless him, saying, May you develop unflinching devotion to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Always chant Lord Krishna's name and only hear Krishna's glories. Everything becomes auspicious and successful when one worships the Supreme Lord Krishna. Without devotional service to his lotus feet, physical beauty, learning, etc. are useless. Krishna is the Supreme Father and the life and soul of everyone. Simply try to develop undeviating love for the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. Heartwarming words such as these would fill Vishwambara with joy. Lifting his face, he would glance at everyone, showering his mercy. He would say, your blessings carry the weight of real truth. Who other than you devotees can bless me with the mercy to receive devotional attachment to the Lord's lotus feet? Elevated devotees like yourselves are capable of granting devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna is very pleased and showers his mercy upon those who serve his devotees. I consider that it is due to my great fortune that you are teaching me the process of devotional service to the Supreme Lord. I know that I can become attached to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna if I can serve pure devotees like yourselves. So Haribol, Namaste. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to um, speak to you and glorify uh, Lord Chaitanya. And may we always uh, chant Krishna's names, and may we all be blessed by our spiritual master with pure devotion for Krishna. Haribo, namaste. Krishna. Haribo, namaste, sir. Bhagavad thank you so much for being with us and telling the story so astonishing and amazing. Uh, our most desirable uh, is to love for Krishna. Thank you so much, sir. Always take care of this as a memorable basis. All right, everyone, from Sir Mahabhagavad Das, lecture.
So let's move to our share of my Kirtan from New Zealand. Let's welcome Harry and JP. Harry, welcome us here. Hi, Bo. Thanks so much for having us and having this opportunity. Thank you so much for coming. We have kept everything. Namaste, Bo. Hi, Bo. Nice to see you. Mama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pastaya Bhutale, Shrimate Siraswari Pananda, Parma Krishna 